In lab, you guys looked at a couple of things that affected how much energy was absorbed and stored by the Earth. And we saw that uh, Earth, like sand, sandy soil, actually absorbs heat and then re-radiates it fairly quickly. And in fact, it's that re-radiation that causes most of the heating of the sun's atmosphere. Uh, a lot of it is, a lot of the sun's energy is reflected off the atmosphere by the clouds, uh, and it, or it moves through it and hits the earth. And then it re-radiates from the earth at a little bit lower intensity, and then the atmosphere warms from that. But there's also differential heating, and that occurs because the sun doesn't hit every area of the earth at the same angle. So areas with more direct heating or more direct sunlight get warmer. Areas with less direct sunlight get smaller amounts of radiation. And this leads to the different climate zones on earth. It also causes the seasons. So if we take a look at the seasons, you can see over here we have the earth. And in the northern hemisphere, this is summer because the majority of the sun is hitting straight on in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere it's winter because there's not very much incident rays down here. And then half a year later over on this side uh, it is now winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. Now this isn't the only thing that happens. Um, we also have these mass wind forces or wind movements that happen because of this unequal heating uh, and also the motion of the earth. So if we look at the earth, uh, right at the equator, that's where most of the time it's getting the most direct sunlight. It's not so affected by the seasons. And we get in the middle of the earth warm air rising up from the equator. Remember warm air particles are going to become less dense and they're going to rise and then the cooler dense air sinks in and takes its place. But since the wind uh, or the earth is also rotating we get this thing called the Coriolis force and essentially that causes the wind to curve uh, so as it's moving this way close to the equator instead of moving straight towards the equator it actually bends a little bit but then these cells up here they're actually moving the other way and so they bend the other way and so what we see on where we live is we see these patterns of wind moving this way across our country uh, and that's what our weather patterns follow so we have these convection currents caused by the earth's rotation and differential heating uh, that that drive global weather patterns now, like you guys saw in lab, with the heating and cooling of sand and water, uh, the earth actually heats up and cools down rapidly, water not so much, which is why coastal areas tend to have less temperature fluctuation than uh, places in the middle of the country. Um, now, the one thing I do want to point out to you is landforms have more of an effect on weather uh, than just the temperature variation. It also affects things like how much rainfall we get. So above the ocean the the warm water is actually you know evaporating off the surface and being absorbed as water vapor into the air and as it is rising and pushed up this mountain okay, it gets cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler well that means those particles are slowing down they're losing energy they're gonna start to condense they're gonna start together and then they pour out of these clouds as rain now wind from the from this water is still pushing this air up so it does make it down over the other side of the mountain but it's released all its water over here so we have this nice green uh, wet side of the mountain with lots of moisture and then when it comes back down on this side we have what's called the rain shadow because it doesn't have a very much moisture left in it anymore and so we don't get rain all the all the moisture has been pushed out of that water